unlike the the waves that we the types of waves we discussed uh, last semester, like our sound and our string waves, uh, electromagnetic waves uh, don't need a medium uh, to propagate through. They can they can propagate uh, in vacuum. Uh, there were various scientists over the years that did experiments uh, trying to figure out what the speed of light was. Uh, Galileo was may have been the first one, uh, but all he was able to determine was that light is really fast because uh, he didn't have an accurate enough instrument at the time. And there are a couple other guys listed in the book that did experiments related to the speed of light. It's it's a difficult calculation to make because it's so fast. Uh, and the, the basic way that we tell how fast something is is you know, seeing what distance it covers in a given time. But if something's covering a distance so fast that you can't measure that time, then you know, it's it's problematic to to calculate uh, the speed of light. Uh, nowadays, the, with the ex various experiments that have been done, uh, a guy named Fizeau was probably the first one to get a a reasonably accurate measure of the speed of light. Uh, later on, there was an experiment. Uh, Michelson and Morley did another experiment that that uh, increased the accuracy of what we know the speed of light to be. And actually, well before any experimental uh, evidence showed up. Maxwell theoretically said that the speed of light was related to two physical constants that we've already talked about. Uh, and he calculated that the speed of light was 1 over the root of mu naught epsilon naught, which, if you punch in those numbers, gets you 2998633380 point stuff. Uh, Whereas the experimental value that has been settled for the speed of light now is 29979245.8 is the currently accepted value. So as you can see, these are, I mean, they're a fairly large number off, but this is actually only a 0.024% difference between the two. So the theoretical value, and this is still what we hold to be the theoretical value, uh, is very close to, uh, to what, what we've determined experimentally. Um, and as you can see, and this is accurate uh, as far as we can tell, this is the, the most accurate uh, determination of the speed of light we have. Although for our purposes, uh, we're just going to use the first couple digits and we'll, we'll essentially be using 3 times 10 to the 8th uh, meters per second for the, the speed of light. So as I said, light doesn't need a medium to travel. Okay. Uh, another weird thing about light is that the speed of light is the same for all observers, which is the basis of special relativity, uh, which we might get to discuss uh, after the AP test. Um, where, recall when we were talking about sound and we, we talked about the Doppler effect, uh, there was a lot of stuff that went into that. And we had to figure out you know, what the, the speed of the source was, what the speed of the observer was, you know, whether they were moving toward each other or away from each other. And I drew this little picture where the you know the wave fronts were clustered closer together uh, if the the source was moving and they were clustered further apart if the source wasn't moving, and the speed of that sound was can be different for different observers. And we talked about relative velocity a while back. You know if you're if you're driving in a car and you throw a tennis ball forward, you know you have to add the velocity of the car and the velocity that you give the tennis ball. Right? If you're driving in a car and you shoot a beam of light forward, uh, you the, the light goes forward at 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. It doesn't matter what reference frame you're standing in. If you're standing still on the ground, light will go at 3, point, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. If you're moving toward the source of light at you know, 2.5 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, the light will still travel at 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second relative to you. Um, and that's actually the base, one of the the fundamental bases of Einstein's relativity was that the speed of light is constant in all reference frames. Anyway, it's kind of interesting and, and kind of weird, uh, but for the moment, you, you just need to know that when we're considering the Doppler effect with light, we only need to worry about the relative speed of the, the source and observer. We don't need to be concerned about how fast one of them is going, how fast the other is going, and, and so forth. So for the Doppler effect with light, uh, the the frequency, the change in frequency, or the new frequency, is equal to the original frequency times 1 plus or minus u over c, where u is the relative velocity 
or speed, I should say, of the source and the observer. Okay, NC, of course, is this the speed of light. Right. Um, then the plus means that they're moving toward one another, and the minus means they're moving away from one another. Okay. Whereas, you know, for the Doppler effect of the sound, we had a, a pair of plus or minuses, and it depended on on whether, you know, one, the source was moving toward the observer, whether the observer was moving toward the source and all that. Uh, but but for light, because of that, the fact that light doesn't change speed in different reference frames, uh, you only have to worry about what their velocity is relative uh, to one another. Right? <coughs> A Doppler effect is used in, in police radar guns. Uh, that <coughs> Excuse me that measure the speed of, of cars and such. They basically just shoot a beam of uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, radio waves. Radar stands for radio, dete radio Detection and Ranging. It's actually an acronym. Um, and uh, yeah, they use it in radar guns. You know, you, you fire the, the little gun at, the, at a, a car and then the, the radio waves will bounce off the car and come back and their frequency shift tells you how fast the car is going. Um, and it's also used in, in weather, weather systems. You may have heard, if you're watching a weather report, it might say Doppler radar indicates, you know, whatever. Uh, what they're doing there is they're shooting a beam of radio waves up, you know, at the sky, and then it reflects off of clouds. And, and so those, that tells, tells them various things about position and density of the clouds, uh, as well as how fast those clouds are moving uh, from the from the Doppler shift. Um, so just doing an example calculation, let's say that we have an FM radio station. So an FM radio station is broadcasting at a frequency of 88.5 megahertz. You drive toward the station at 32 meters per second. What is the change in frequency? So a lot of times what you're going to be asked about is the change in frequency, not necessarily what the new frequency is. So if we look at this equation, uh, if we rearrange this, if we distributed this f, we'd have frequency, you know, time, we've got frequency times, you know, one plus or minus stuff. So the, the change in frequency, you know, is the f prime minus the f. Uh, and we can figure that out if we distribute the f and subtract this over, then we get that this is just equal to plus or minus f times u over c. So the one kind of drops out if we're asked for change in frequency. And we can start plugging stuff in. So the plus goes corresponds to the source and, and uh, observer moving toward one another, or relatively moving closer to one another, and minus corresponds to moving away. So we're driving toward the station, so that's a positive. And it's positive, 88.5 um, megahertz. Mega is times 10 to the 6. And then their relative velocity, 32 meters per second, over. And C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th. Now we can already, you could already probably figure out, just by looking at this, this is not going to be a huge change in frequency. Uh, if we punch those numbers into, our, into the calculator, you know, this becomes a 10 squared in the denominator, so we've got 88.5 times 32, divided by 300. And so we get the change in frequency is 9.44 hertz which might seem substantial, except that the 88.5 megahertz is 88512345, and so the new frequency, this was our original frequency, and our new frequency then is 8850000, oh, too many zeros, 9.44. Okay, so there's, there's, it's a very small percent difference, um, which, uh, it indicates that you know if you're tuning a radio station, you don't have to uh, worry about whether you're driving toward the station or not. Uh, but it is a detectable difference, and that's that's important with things like Doppler radar. Uh, speaking of Doppler radar, let's let's take an example uh, of of a a weather system. 
Another example here. I'm going to find the frequency shift detected when a 2.7 gigahertz source uh, reflects back from a weather system moving at 28 meters per second. Again, frequency shift. So our change in frequency is the plus or minus F times U over C. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so if we start, we can just plug stuff in. Uh, so it's reflecting back from a weather system moving at 28 meters per second. We don't know um, what direction this 28 is, whether it's moving toward the source or whether they're moving toward or away from each other. Uh, so we're just finding the magnitude of the, the change in frequency. Uh, so the frequency is 2.7 gigahertz. Giga is 10 to the ninth. And then our speed is 28, speed of light, 3 times 10 to the eighth. And so this is actually a, a substantial frequency shift. If I punch this in, uh, we can get rid of that, get rid of that, just make that 27. Canceling out some factors of 10. So we've got 27 times 30, 28, sorry, not 38, divided by 3. Gets us a change in frequency of 252 hertz. So they use this, this really high frequency source so that we get a big enough uh, change in frequency to, to detect. And that allows us to get useful information out of the Doppler radar.